Hi from Nebraska y'all, it's Square Peg answering another subscriber's question. This time it's about the Mandela Effect. Many of us I think are Mandela Affected, I know I am, and I suppose it was probably, gosh I don't remember, it must have been the mid-teens, 2015 maybe, 14, that I heard about it, learned about it, and it was, I'm pretty sure, it was because of the Berenstain Bears, <laughs> which are now the Berenstain Bears. And I, I was like, well, that's crazy. You know, it's obviously not the Berenstain Bears, but lo, it is. And I'll tell the little story that goes along with that because this is my big anchor effect. I don't know who uses this phrase aside from Matt from Quantum of Conscience, but that's where I heard the, the phrase anchor effect, and it's the Mandela effect that you are 100% absolutely sure that it was the way it was for whatever reason, and it's different for everybody. So Berenstain Bears are mine. And I started learning German when I was six years old. My dad had learned it in school, and he was teaching me. So one, the first thing I learned was my Nanama ist Jenny, you know, and I learned in German class later when I was taking it in school that people don't say it that way. <laughs> you would say ich heiße instead of my Nanama ist, you know, but anyway, uh, that's aside from the point. So I learned the difference between EI and IE in German and for English speakers, the way you remember whether it's an E sound or an I sound is the second letter. If it's I-E, then you say E. And if it's E-I, then you say I. It's a very simple rule. There aren't exceptions. <laughs> and I had already learned this. So I was having a conversation with my mom at the, some doctor's office, dentist office, I don't remember, and there was a, a Berenstein Berenstein, I don't even remember now which it is because of the stupid Berenstain, but I was explaining to her why it was pronounced the way it was because of the E-I and I-E. Whichever one is second is the one you pronounce. Now, I would not have had this conversation at all with my mother if it was Berenstain. The conversation would never have happened. So I am 100% sure that it was not Berenstain when I was a child. It was either Berenstain or Berenstein, right? I don't actually remember, and now I can't find any evidence of it to show me because the residuals get harder to find as time goes on because the editing bots, whatever they are, that get rid of all the evidence uh, that it's changed continue to work on that. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into, you know, the whole shtick about what the Mandela effect is, I'm assuming that y'all know. However, the person who asked me this question said that they were having changes in their own personal life. Things in their house have changed. And now this is a very small subset of people who are Mandela affected. Nothing that I am aware of cha has changed in my own personal life. I don't know anyone. It, she was literally the second person I've ever heard describe that. So I find that interesting and frightening. Like if a building appeared <laughs> next door to me that was not there yesterday, that would completely freak me out. There are stories about people who, you know, get off a plane and they don't exist. There's no record of them. They go to their house and someone else is living there and they go to their job and no one's ever heard of them. I mean, that's exceedingly frightening business. Um, so what I wanted to talk about, first of all, I will talk about Philip K. Dick. I just learned his middle name, Kindred. Interesting middle name. That's what the K stands for. Also, his Philip only has one L. But he has written stories about alternate places, alternate timelines, you know, basically everything's the same, you know, the continents are all in the same place, and the history is basically the same, except at some point things have changed. There are fundamental differences in society, and he'll write a whole book about somebody in that society where things are basically the same, but there's a fundamental change that's been made. 
I've read some of his books. In fact, I just learned one of my high school friends has an enormous Philip K. Dick collection. He's got like every Pulp Fiction, you know, paperback that was ever published, which was really cool to look through the video that he had made showing all the covers of them. So I looked at his um, birthday and death day, which are interesting. Uh, he was born in 1928 and he died in 1982. So then if you flip his birthday over this 1973 flip date, it brings you out to 2018, which has almost the same numbers in it. You know, the zero for the nine and it's the same, right? And this is the this is when I was released from prison. I was there 23 months. I was locked up total, so it was not very long. But when I got out, <laughs> things had changed. There were a couple of very interesting, notable changes in the world. One of them was that people uh, in Hollywood, famous people, celebrities that used to be one gender, were now another gender pretending to be that gender. This happened while I was in prison. Uh, I I was shifted while I was. This these are timelines. I'm gonna get to this in a second. But what happened and when? You know, when did people start noticing that, talking about it? When did we shift timelines? And it was not something that was ever on my radar at all. It had never occurred to me. Maybe there was. There were notable exceptions that people who, they've told people, you know, they're, they're forthcoming and out front about it. They used to be like Jenner, you know, he was a man, everybody knows it. He was born a man and he changed his gender. Everybody knows that, right? So I knew about those things, but not this sort of secret, everybody is the wrong gender kind of thing. That was brand new and I found out about it when I hit the internet when I got out of prison. I was like, whoa, when did this happen? And the other one was Tartaria and mud floods. This was not a thing when I went into prison. And I was online a lot. I was doing research for everything under the sun. Um, yeah. I don't know when people started talking about that. I had never heard of it until 2018 when I got back onto the internet after a two-year sabbatical. <laughs> Unintentional sabbatical. <clears throat> So I found both of those exceedingly interesting, and I, and I don't know the answer to it, but recently <clears throat> I got to thinking that maybe I, by talking about stuff that I was finding in the timelines, that I was helping to cause them to happen, or just by the fact of me looking for something, say I see, you know, uh, tragic bus crashes on all the dates, you know, then... I start talking about it. I make a video about it. I say, God, watch out, everybody. There's going to be a bus crash, you know. It's going to... And then there's a bus crash. Like, oh my gosh, did I do that? To Have I caused it to happen? And the other thing was an event that I found, um, 1783, I think it was, the Mutiny of Pennsylvania. I think it was what it was called. And, like, who's ever heard of this? Like, it's like a, a thing in history just appeared that was never there before. And I, then I got to thinking, oh, am I creating events in history because I expect to find them? If I'm looking for something, expecting to find it, seek and ye shall find, then suddenly there's a wiki page about an event that nobody's ever heard of before that is a thing. It, it's part of our history. Oh, really? Well, did I make that happen? by looking for it? And this is what I, the answer that came to me the very next day after I made that video where I was almost in tears and I wanted to quit doing what I do because I don't want to create tragedy, right? So this would be like the multiverse. And we are right now, all of us are together in this thick blue line and this is our reality today. But right next to us is a reality that's nearly identical. Nearly identical. There is one Kit Kat Dash difference between ours and the next one. Same thing in the other direction, and it goes on either way, in all directions, 
ad infinitum. So, if you're looking for something to an event that happened in the past, and you and you find it, has the act of looking for it and expecting to find it shifted you from this line to a couple ones over? Or maybe it's just one over, but maybe that event caused a whole bunch of other things to be different and you're actually in a, a fairly different, noticeably different reality. You know, Philip K. Dick has a book that's, um, the, that we didn't win World War II, that we lost and the United States has been split up into the Japanese side and the German side. So that's noticeable. You know, if you woke up one day and that was your reality, you would notice the difference. You know, it's not that gravity doesn't work anymore or, you know, crazy things like that. Like, not exceedingly different where it would be like way out here, a totally different place. But it's somewhere in here, you know? Pretty different, noticeably different. The basic rules of physics are the same, you know, but history has changed. So, would I find this event in the past that wasn't there yesterday, but I'm expecting to find it, and so I look and thought, uh, of course, every time I go looking for something, of course, there it is. Well, is that because I've actually shifted myself over a little bit? And I, and I just, I don't leave my apartment very much, so I maybe haven't noticed the other differences in this green reality or whatever. I haven't noticed any other changes, but there might be some. Because I have now shifted myself out of the place I was at yesterday to a new, new reality, a new universe in the multiverse of places. You know, times, timelines, and places and such, so... I think that basically covers what I wanted to discuss about it, and I don't have any necessarily any answers. This is just me speculating. I can say that the people who have things change in their personal lives, it, that is a very unique and small subset of the greater Mandela-affected community. And this is what I'm thinking about the seek and ye shall find, you know? If you look for something, you might just find it. But it also means that you may not be in the place you were at yesterday. And that place still exists someplace where quarks and leptons don't exist. You know, the boson particle. You know, they keep looking for these particles, looking for smaller and smaller and smaller particles. And they keep finding them. You know, seek and you shall find. But does that just mean, you know, the place where those particles don't exist still exists? We're just not there anymore. You know? So, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave a comment. Thanks. Have a great day.